The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 28th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that out to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of green. That includes the spot volatile index. Hello. You got the Dow up 166, the S&P up 15, the NASDAQ 132, 19 for the Russell, 20 for the semis, 180 for the trannies. Gold is up six bucks. Silver's up six pennies. Light sweet crude is up 58 cents. Natural gas is up a dime. 30 treasuries up four ticks. Print out 119.28 out there. But what's all that mean, the jelly bean? Well, let's go take a look at the intraday charts here. And let's be, well, I tell you where we start. Let's start where we have lately. What are we looking at as far as market breadth? So we'll start. We'll start with the 30-minute time frame. This is the NASDAQ 100. Negative market breadth, 47 below, 15 above. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Again, this is for the 30-minute time frame. We take a look at the S&P 500. Also bearish, 122 above, 208 below. So market should be pulling back. The question is, where is support? We look at those 30-minute time frames. We have four other time frames to monitor. The 60, the 240, daily and weekly. Here is the NASDAQ 100. Bullish for 60, bullish for 240, bullish for the daily. Slightly bearish on the weekly. When I say slightly, 21 above, 22 below. So we're going to have to call that neutral. So the larger time frames for the NASDAQ are bullish. How about the S&P 500? Excellent question. Let's go find out. In the case of the S&P 500, bullish on the 6240 and daily here as well, just slightly more bearish on the weekly with 82 above and 135 below. Yeah, I'd say it's more than just slightly bearish out there. So we've got a mixed market with regard to market breadth out there. That says that we should expect and anticipate choppy markets to continue. Now that we know what the market breadth is, let's go take a look at the NASDAQ, uh, the NQ charts out here for those different different time frames that we looked at. And let's begin with the uh, white background charts up here. So on a daily basis, here's what we know so far. We've had a nice rally. Rally ran right into resistance. Where did it run into resistance? Both at its red oscillator and change line and the center of its bearish structured profile at the 15109 level. That's a level that price must close above to suggest that we see a move up to the top of its daily profile in that 15358 range. The five hour time frame chart uh, is uh, bullish. I take that back. The five-hour time frame chart, price is consolidating with inside its profile. On a four-hour basis, price is run into resistance at 15.087. 15.087 was a TD nine count breakdown level. If price can close above that, you've got resistance at 15.165. Close above 15.106 on a two-hour time frame chart would suggest a further rally. That suggestion would take it back to its recent highs or up to 15.415 out there. No topping pattern on the 60-minute time frame. Remember, that was bullish. We do have support. We have got profile support. Now, that says that at 14.991, 
buyers should be able to hold that level. The 30 minute time frame chart, which showed negative market breadth, was testing mark is testing profile support 15007. What happens if that level fails to hold? It's a great question. Then the answer to that, I'd say I'd go back to the 60 minute time frame chart. And is that level holding, which is 14,991? If that level fails, then I'm not sure I've got to come back and take a look. But right now, price is trading into an area that should hold the support based upon the market breadth that we took a look at. 15 minute time frame is the only one that generated a topping signal this morning. Now, as we came into the open, it was a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top completed right at 9.30. We then saw a sell-off and price pulled back and tested support. And support is 15,009. So we know what to be watching to the upside. We also know what to be watching to the downside. It still gets back to that 14,991 level coming off that 60-minute time frame chart. So that's what the NQ is telling us. Would not be unusual to see the NQ rally today. This could be or should be day number two of consent executive moves higher. Now, that also says that this could be the end of the counter trend move. I say should because we are coming into the end of the month here, right? So we've got today's, a, what is today's the 28th? We've got, uh, geez, where, this month, when does it actually end? Let me look at my calendar here. I know when it ends, I'm just trading it. So it ends on Thursday. So we are entering that uh, window dressing time period. By the way, on a programming note, I'm here today, I'm here tomorrow, but then I'm off to Japan uh, Wednesday morning Weather permitting, maybe we need to fly out tomorrow night. I'm not sure. but uh, And then I will return on September 18th. September 18th. 13-hour time zone difference between uh, where we're at here and, and Japan. So no way for me to really post any kind of show or anything along those lines. But with regard to the NQ here, we'll take a look at it. At least a two-day rally, maybe a three-day rally. But we need to be con concerned that uh, this could be when the NQ's rally stops. Just typical two-bar knee-jerk reaction move to the upside. Now, let's add just a little piece of this. We'll go back to the Apple charts for Nancy. I was just preparing this for her. She had asked to take a look at Apple and Microsoft, which we will do during the show. But since we're talking about the NQ, we're taking a look at the, well, here, this is the number one uh, instrument inside here. This is the uh, seasonal time frame chart for Apple. And Nancy, this is for a 15-year time frame. The red vertical line, the red vertical line is where we're at right now. So what this tells us is that Apple, in the next day or two, this actually uh, turns out to be the 29th, so that would be tomorrow. Turns out that tomorrow, over the last 15 years, if you averaged everything out, has been where Apple enters its unfavorable seasonal cycle. And this is the unfavorable seasonal cycle that would take Apple into uh, bottom maybe in the mid-October time frame. Now, that was a 15-year time frame. How about the last 10 years? Last 10 years says, okay, maybe that top doesn't start until we come back from um, the uh, Labor Day holiday out there. But we're still in the unfavorable seasonal time frame. What if we go to a 25-year period? 25-year period says, yeah, maybe that just gets pushed off again until the uh, beginning of September out there. But you can see here that with regard to Apple, it is headed into its unfavorable seasonal cycle. We can put the NASDAQ up here. Why don't we do that before we go to break? We'll put up the NASDAQ 100. Let's put that up. We'll leave this on a 25-year basis. Again, what you're seeing here is the NASDAQ itself is also in that unfavorable time frame. So today could be the extent of the rally inside the equity markets out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So let's get to our first request. Uh, first one's coming in from Ryan. I believe Ryan's in the uh, Tiger's Den. Also sent me an email. Ryan, thanks for doing that. The first request was to take a look at plug. P-L-U-G is the uh, ticker symbol. So we've got that chart up on our screen out here. What we don't see, well, let me pull this back just a tad. Say we don't see. We don't see because I don't have a. Uh... So what I really don't have here is a bottom pattern. You know, the, this retracement from way back here, Ryan, this retracement here on July 31st, that really negated the ability to use an A to B equals CD downside pattern out here. And I don't see one that we could really use. What we did see is price got back to a breakout level in the 826 area. Price is below profiles, is below its red oscillator and change line. The daily chart doesn't look that good. Looks like maybe a counter trend move up to the 860 level, maybe even 889. Now, if price did close above 889, we would change our tune on that. That would at least suggest a rally to 948. But we're, that's not what we're dealing with as we speak right now. Let's look at the daily time frame chart. Daily time frame chart shows that price is pulled back to its breakout level at 826. It's a weekly chart. You closed below it last week. Not really a good sign there. You're also below the bottom of its uh, profile. So that takes us into the monthly time frame chart. The monthly chart does have a TD9 count bottom that formed back in May. Price right now is trading below the bottom of its monthly profile, bullish in structure. It should hold by month's end, but if it doesn't hold, and when I say it doesn't hold, I mean it closed below 854. That would be on, I think the month ran through Wednesday or Thursday. So let's just say on Friday, you get if you close below that on Thursday or whatever the month end is, 31st, that would not be good. Now, it still has a TD9 count bottom, but that would suggest that that low, that low being 739, would likely be tested. So I don't see a reason to uh, step into plug as we speak. If we look at a 30-minute time frame chart here, Ryan, this shows what? It just simply shows that price rallied right up to breakdown resistance out there at the 848 level. So I hope that helped you out with regard to PLUG. You had a second request, and that was a take a look at wheat, W-E-A-T. Now, W-E-A-T is the ETF out there. Oh, I didn't uh, have that there. But you know what I could do here? No, I won't do that. We're going to switch. Uh, so in order to take a look at W-E-A-T, what everybody needs to know is what 
is inside of WEAT. We can't just go to the WEAT chart, WEAT, and uh, which is the lower right chart here, and give you a very good analysis. So Stevie's not going to do that. Now, Ryan, I don't know if you knew this or not, but you do now. Uh, you've got three different contracts that make up that holding. You've got December of 2023. That makes up the majority. Uh, I, I want to say the majority. is split into thir you know, like a third. So that's maybe 35%, 36%. you got to go take a look on the website out there. But you also have December 24. So you got December of 23 and December 24. Those two contracts make up the largest percentage holdings. And they've got March of 2024. That's what you've got. And that's what you have to monitor to understand what message WEAT is providing you. Because that's the ETF. Well, as we take a look at all three of those wheat contracts, what we don't see is any kind of a bottom signal. We see, in each case, price trading below the red oscillator and change line. In two of the three cases, price trading below the bottom of profile support out there. So this is suggesting that wheat wants to get back and perhaps test its lows out here. And the lows I'm referring to, uh, the December 2023 contract is May of 2023. And it is May of 2023 on the December 24 contract. And it is May of 2023 on the March contract. Looks to me like that's where price is likely headed to. But I don't see anything here or any reason for you to take a position in WEAT. You'll get your signals from these future contracts. And because of their holdings, this is called one third each, which isn't the case. But you can look that up. You've got to monitor each of those. So, Ryan, I hope that helped you out both with plug as well as with W. E A T. Nancy wrote in and Nancy wanted to take, let me close this out here, free up some resources. Uh, you bet. Nancy wanted to take a look at Apple and Microsoft. She's got some call positions, I believe, that end this Friday out there. So as we take a look at those charts, we'll start with Apple. Now, we already covered Apple, and we know that Apple has a horrible September, just like the NASDAQ. Here, No, I didn't, really didn't point that out, but here, here I will point it out. Here's, here's uh, the NASDAQ. 100 for just the last 25 years. September is an ugly month out there. And you'll see here, if we go ahead and we put up Apple, so put that up, it's gonna take a moment here to populate, there we go. And now with regard to Apple, it is the only losing month of the year on average over the last 25 years. In fact, we go back 42 years out there and see if this changes. It doesn't change too much. It gives you a, a June and a, a September um, and here on the over the last, what is this, uh, 42 years, that top comes in right around September 2nd. So you're nearing a point in time here where you're fighting the stream, if you will. Uh, with regard to Apple, what do we know about it? All that we know about it is it is consolidating with inside its uh, profile. And that profile runs from 178.83, that's both the center and the bottom. And at the top, it's 182.88. Now, we'll look at a 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's any signals out here. The weekly chart is telling us that price likely wants to get back to at least 170.42. The monthly chart is suggesting that it's losing its momentum because right now, price is trading below that green oscillator and change line. And to close below it at the month's end, which uh, the price would be 182.04 right now, that would suggest it move back to 168.79. I'm not saying 168.79 will hold that support. But certainly something to consider as we move into this very unfavorable seasonal cycle here for both Apple as well as the NASDAQ. Now, we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. We'll see that Apple formed a TD9 count top. So that TD9 count top, that pattern completed at 1030. Uh, price is pulling back right now and testing support. Overall, what we have out here, uh, Nancy, is a neutral signal. That signal will become less than neutral if price closes below that green oscillator and change line. That's in about the 178.65 zone. If price closes below that, Nancy, you're looking at a move back to 176.64. And if that level fails, likely you'll see an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of Apple. So you've got a short-term top, potentially a short-term top. Maybe it's something more than that. So if you're in the money, and based on these, uh, based on knowing that you're running into this very unfavorable seasonal time frame, you know maybe that's not the best place to have a trade on. But what do I know? Uh, I'm just uh, sharing with you and narrating what the charts are communicating to us. So I hope that that helped you out with regard to Apple, Nancy. Let's go take a look at Microsoft, see if Microsoft has any different viewpoint on the uh, market. In fact, let's go see what Microsoft typically does this time of the year. So let's get up its charts. MSFT. Again, it'll take a, a moment for this to populate. There we go. We've got Microsoft. And here, let's just go back as many years. So I've got 37 years. And here, what we can see 
is that it also is entering a unfavorable time frame. And that unfavorable time frame should last at least through the middle of October. So now we take a look at the charts out here from Microsoft. What do we see? We see on a daily basis prices consolidating with inside its daily profile. Don't really have a bottom out here inside of Microsoft. We've just got a consolidation within that range. That range is 318.23 to 324.92. The monthly or the weekly chart has got a nice TD9 count top out there prices below profile if the door is open for a rundown to breakout support at 307.59 and if 307.59 fails to hold this support shoot then we're looking at 299.40 280.11 251.16 that's what i see when we take a look at microsoft for the daily the weekly and the monthly time frame but let's not stop there we've got more as long as we've got a few seconds here and that takes us to that 30 minute time frame chart and nancy a TD9 count top there as well. Sounds like a little synergy between Apple and Microsoft. Right now, it signals neutral because it's holding support, both the top of its profile and its oscillator and change line. But a close below 320.05 would suggest lower price for sure. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be ours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, so still all the U.S. equity futures trading to the upside. Uh, spot volatility is flat right now at 1568. We'll want to watch that close at day's end to assist us with what the intention of the uh, market is. Let's take a look at CCJ. This is for uh, Peak G inside the Tiger's Den. Peak, nice to uh, see you. And uh, with regard to uh, Kamiko Gold, CCJ, I believe, um, not sure how to pronounce it, obviously, Kamiko Corp. Uh, right now, what we have is prices trading above profile. I'm trading above that green asset earn change line on the daily time frame peak. That's our bullish conditions. Now, it does have, you did say you are peak G, and he is the peak G out here, and Stevie's got a peak G. If we take a look at it. So that's coming off of the low uh, that formed out here on July the uh, 6th. And if you start doing your Chapman wave counts out there, today is entering peak number seven. Now, what peak knows is that in order for that to confirm, you've got to have a lower high. So the earliest that that pattern could confirm would be tomorrow. Now, even if it forms, if it forms, let's assume it forms tomorrow. That means today would be letter G out here. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. So its signal is neutral. The price closes below that, that it is 36.11 right now. Then price would likely move back to 34.73, 34.04, or 33.58. So you've got a potential for a top, but you've got to wait for, as you know, you know the rules better than anybody, you've got to wait for a lower high out there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, is it supporting a potential turn? Well, you're only in bar number seven on a weekly basis. And price above profile, well above that green oscillator and change line. You know what that says? That says, unless there's a bearish reversal candle, that uh, Kamiko Corp wants to trade higher. And on a monthly time frame, wow, you talk about peak G's out there. Peak, did you do that on purpose? Were you just testing me? I think he was. Because if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, peak ought to know that there's a wave number seven top there. Now, on a monthly basis, that cannot confirm until the end of next month out there. But you've got a potential top inside of the monthly time frame, no top inside of the weekly time frame, and a potential top inside of the uh, daily. Now, with those potential tops, let's see on the daily time frame, we like to see something on a shorter term time frame out there. And here, if we take a look at it, you've got a TD9 count top. Hey, oh, five surprise, we don't have a peak G there, but we do have a TD9 count top. What price has done, when you get a top, just like we're talking about on those, whether it's a wave seven top or anything else, all that it really signals to you and I is price should make its way back to support. It's when it breaks through support that then there's troubles in River City. In this case here right now, price got right back to support. Where was support? Turns out it was its green oscillator and change line and the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its profile was 36.19 and the low today, 36, or the low on that, on that uh, half hour session was 36.19. Gotta love how those profiles work as well. So what do we have here? On a 30 minute time frame, you've got a neutral signal. Now, if price closed below 36.19, you might be onto something with regard to CCJ pulling back even further. It certainly would pull back further and should pull back then to 35.44. And if it closes below that, that's where it could be signaling that, okay, that peak G out there, yeah, there might be something to it, peak. And no pun intended. So hope that helped you out with regard to CCJ. Thanks for taking the time to write in. And as always, uh, good to uh, hear from you. Duke wrote in, and Duke wants to take a look. Duke would like to short soybeans. So let's go take a look at the November soybean contract out here, see what we can find. Turns out, Duke, that uh, today will become bar number nine of a TD9 count. You know what that tells us? That says you should see a short-term top at least form between today and tomorrow. Now, remember... 80% of the time, well, uh, not 80, I, I, I take that back. Just skip that, skip that there. That was a brain fart. Didn't mean to say that at that moment. Uh, but what we do know is that the high of this pattern can take place in the bar following bar number nine. Well, shoot, price gapped up today. I don't have any, we're not at any resistance level on the daily time frame. So I don't know that today is that top. We'll look at a short-term time frame chart, try to figure that out. On a weekly time frame, odds favor that price is going to make its way to 1411.75. It's gotten pretty close to that for sure. That's the top of its weekly profile. The monthly chart here not helping us a whole heck of a lot. Now, if we look at a 30-minute time frame chart, if you give me a moment here, we'll pull the 30-minute time frame chart over, see what we see out here. And here you have what? Nothing much. You got price trading between its TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 1406.75 and uh, support, which is down at 1396.30. And even below that, you'd have support at 1378. So here's what I think you ought to do, Duke, is I uh, think, well, you know, let's go see if I can figure out what soybeans do historically speaking. What is their seasonal pattern? So let's put that up on the uh, screen. I, I'm not sure if we can pull that up or not. Let's see. 
if we've got soybeans here. Is it uh, in front of me and I just don't see it? Here we go, soybeans. So let's uh, see what time period we've got. We have 32 years worth of information. So over a 30 year time period, the top in soybeans typically comes in around the September 3rd time frame. That'd be the first stop, September 12th. So let's say September 12th through the 3rd with price moving lower into October. So you are at the same time you're getting a daily TD9 count top, you're hitting that potential unfavorable seasonal cycle. Over a 25 year period of time, nothing different there. Over a 15 year period of time, we're in it basically right now. So Duke, I see what you're looking at, or at least the seasonal charts here, see what you're looking at. And certainly over the last 15 years, soybeans have acted miserably in the month of September. Uh, so um, yeah, okay, I get it, I see ya. So, um, Look at look at more intraday charts out there. You know, you've got some potential signals, but maybe that top really doesn't come until tomorrow. So, Duke, thanks for bringing that to our attention, and uh, best of luck to you. We had a request to take a look at NVIDIA. The question is, is time to short? So let's pull up the charts here for NVIDIA, NVDA. And we're looking for some kind of a top out here. So what do we know? We're going to back up here. And we're going to start at the longer term time frame. Longer term time frame is the monthly time frame. What do we know about it? Well, this is going to complete bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, in order for bar number nine to complete, and bar number nine must complete, that means that at the end of next month, the end of September, price must close above 378.34 in order for that pattern to take hold. However, do you see what I see? I think the answer is yes, you do. And what is that? Well, right now, the bar that's in place out here is called a key reversal bar. Why is it called that, Stevie? It's called that for three different reasons. Number one, in order to generate a key reversal bar, you must be in an extended condition. Well, folks, I guarantee you if a Rhodesman to indicator signal is triggered, you're in an extended condition. Other ways, an A to B equals CD towards the D point out there, um, maybe towards the top of a profile. But here, we're definitely extended. First thing has been taken care of. The second thing is you must trade above the prior bars high and below the prior bars low. Well, that's been accomplished in the month of August. And then the last thing, which I can't answer for you just yet, can answer it for you at 1137 in the morning on August 28th, but we need to answer this on the 31st. And that is price must close one tick, just one tick in the opposite direction of the trend. So in this case here, what price would need to do is close, below, close at, least, at least at or below 457.92, 457.92. What happens if it doesn't? Well, then you'll have a no key reversal bar. You'll be bar number eight, and we really won't have a conclusion that we can draw on a monthly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart, you've got a good old fashioned consolidation with inside profiles, 408.99 to 472. In the daily time frame, you're trading above the top of its profile. Certainly no reason to take a short right here, right now. We'll get back to this break. Let's take a look at NVIDIA on the 30-minute time frame chart as well. In fact, we can look at it on the 30-minute and the 10-minute chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, you know what I've done here during that break? I put up the uh, chart uh, for the seasonal cycle uh, for uh, NVIDIA. And as we take a look at it, now this is over a 24-year period of time. And what you can see here is we're in a period of time where NVIDIA typically tops out. And in it, like like the markets, like everything else, uh, it runs lower into the middle of October. We could take a look at NVIDIA over its 24-year history. Its unfavorable months have been uh, June, July. We're past that, but then September and August is typically a good month. Its best month is November, has been November. That's over a 24-year period of time. If we dive down just to the last 10 years, well, we're still in its unfavorable seasonal time period. So it does make sense. Now, it's one of the strongest stocks that are out there. Do you want to... Uh, do you want to short one of the stronger stocks? I'm not going to make that decision out here. Uh, but what we don't have is we don't have that topping pattern on the daily time frame where we have support that is holding. So we've already covered that. On an intraday time period, on a 30-minute that is, what we can see out here is this is form, has formed a TD9 count bottom. And all that we've got is price consolidating with inside this profile between 453 and 464. Whichever side breaks tells us which direct, where price is headed to. Now, if it breaks the upside, 485 is a target. To the downside, 422 would be a target. So you've got a, a bottom pattern in place and a little consolidation with inside that profile. Um, certainly not telling you to short. If we look at a 10-minute time frame chart out here. On a 10-minute time frame chart, you've got a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. Price is going to trade into its resistance zone. That's between 461.37 and 463.64. So with regard to NVIDIA, seasonally speaking, it basically tops out around now. And uh, from a seasonal standpoint, we saw that. Uh, oh, from a seasonal standpoint, we saw that. What we don't have again on the daily time frame is some type of confirmed top out here. Nor do we have that on the uh, weekly time frame. So uh, I hope that helps you out with regard to Nvidia. The next request, I think it's the only other request that I've got, came in okay by email. It is uh, you're in J Nugget to long. Do you see where do you see the next resistance level? So let's put up the Junior Nugget J N U G. See if we can help to identify some profile levels, maybe oscillator and change line support or resistance. And this is for Joe. And so the next resistance level, that's assuming that it can close above the resistance level it's trading into today. That's the top of its bearish structured profile. So your first number to write down in your pad of paper is 3127. 
We're trading right now at about 31 37 so about 10 cents higher let me just check on that j and ug i'm sure i've got a slight delay on here with everything i've got going yeah 3180 is the uh, current print yeah so i'm not even close out here so as long as price can close above 3127 which it has not done um then with the next resistance point then old resistance could become new support so I'm going to give you a resistance level, which I've already done. And if it closes above that for two consecutive sessions, your support will become either the top of the profile, 3137, but more likely it was only a counter trend move to the downside, 3039. Your next resistance level above this 3127 is 3324. And 3324 on a daily chart is its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That being said, we have to go take a look at the weekly chart. What do we have in a weekly chart? We have price back inside this profile right now, and this next price target of resistance is a 3180. We're trading, I know my chart doesn't show that right now, we're just, the last tick was 3183. So if price can overcome that level, 3180, which it's trying to do right now, a move to the 3370 area would be likely. So that's what I see with regard to support and resistance, Joe. There's no reason for us to take a look at that uh, weekly time a monthly time frame but let's put up the gdx because the gdx is at least the one-to-one -one version of what's going into the miners they're not the junior miners out there and I, I think is I, yeah I, i'm pretty sure that's more than a one-to-one -one. is there what what is the one-to-one -one miners anybody know off the top of your head is there one-to-one -one on the junior miners that is this is the gdx but let's just talk about the gdx since we're here and if we take a look at the GDX, uh, oh, John S. do the GDX as well. So as we take a look at it, it's trading above profiles out here. And as long as price remains above uh, 2845, what we could have is an A to B equals CD pad that's setting up. Now, the swing point will be the trading day of August 24th. And the volume there was 17 million shares. So far, the first two hours of trading, you've done 3.5 million. So that uh, looks like to me like we are light in the loafers. Now, that does not mean that this cannot form an A to B equals CD to the upside. And a price closes above even if it does on lighter volume 2897 that would trigger the a to b equal cd pattern now that trigger or that pattern would then give us a price projection as soon as stevie can grab this thing good lord i've lost my grabbing technique that's weird uh okay uh it's really not okay i mean what the heck okay i'm just gonna copy paste and try to move oh my goodness gracious all right. Uh, Stevie might have to do this offline. What I mean by offline is doing it on my other system. Wow. Wow. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, everything's happening for us. It doesn't want me to tell you what that uh, next opportunity is. So I'm going to do this on my other screen. The GDX right now, well, GDX, I have to actually learn how to type. Uh, I did learn there is no GDX Z symbol out here. So with regard to the GDX, it's trading above that uh, swing point as we speak right now. And it would be a small A to B equals CD pattern. That small A to B equals CD pattern would give us a one-to-one -one price projection of 29.71. Above that, it would be 30.17. I know you're not seeing that on your screen right now. I've got it on my screen out here, but that would be the uh, price projection level. Now, the next level of resistance that price is going to deal with is going to be the bottom of its weekly profile. And the bottom of its weekly profile is priced at 29.12. So you really want to watch 29.12. I know Stevie said if you close above 28.97, you'll trigger an A to B equals CD, even if it doesn't have the volume out there. But now we're going to change our tune. And why? Because we know we've got resistance at 29.12. So I say price must close above 29.12. 12 in order to trigger that A to B equal CD. And if it does, we got that price projection of 2971 to 3017. Turns out that a counter trend move, if this is all that it is, I'm not saying it is, but if it is only a counter trend move, price would find resistance at 3021, right inside that range that we were just taking a look at for the A to B equal CD pattern out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the GDX. Um, GDXJ, so I guess that would be the one-to-one. -one. So let's take a look at GDXJ. Thank you on that, uh, John, which would be the opposite version of the nugget. So this is really where we're going to get the better uh, trade information here, Joe. So as we take a look at it, let me go on my other screen since I've got a delay as well. GDXJ. And uh, right now, price is trading above the swing point. That swing point with this bar labeled bar number three out here. That high inside the GDXJ is at uh, 3565. Volume there are 7.8 million shares. So far today, you have done uh, 1.2 oh, million. Wow, so this does have the volume. It's going to be close, I should say.
It'll be close. It looks like it's still a little bit light. But on the GDXJ, the A to B equals CD, I'm not even going to try to make it on the white background screens here. I'll just give you where those price targets are. The initial or the one-to-one -one is 36.84, the one-to-one, 0.272, 3756. Now, the GDXJ is trading with inside its profiles already. So on a weekly basis, its next resistance level is going to be at about 35.99. That number is going to trade, you know, going to move up and down as price moves up and down. But you can kind of use that as a guide. Line. And on a monthly time frame chart, what you'd love to see at the end of the month is for price to close above the top of its profile. And for the GDXJ, that number, that magic number is 36.25. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, request inside the Tiger's Den for Mr. Bill to take a look at the seasonal pattern for both the GDX and gold. So we've got the GDX up on our screen right now. Now, this is a 17-year history that we have out here. You can see that we're in the unfavorable seasonal time cycle, time frame cycle. That typically lasts until really about the early part of September. Now, it's a bumpy ride, or at least it has been a bumpy ride. But what you want to know, I suppose, Mr. Bill, is how does September uh, do for the GDX? 
DX. And if you look at that bottom right-hand panel there, again, that's over a 17-year period of time. September is the weakest month for the uh, GDX. Somebody says, uh, buy on Monday's close. That's right. Sell on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, that uh, that's a trading strategy for sure to uh, consider. Now, that's over 17 years out here. We've got the 15-year. We're not going to see much of a change there. Um, if we take a look at a little bit shorter time frame, the last 10 years. So you can see we're in its unfavorable seasonal uh, cycle time frame. As far as gold is concerned, let's pull up the charts here for Goldilocks. So Stevie can find them. Here we go, right up at the top. And in the case of gold, we go back much further. We go back 55 years for uh, gold. And when we do that, we can see we're basically in a favorable time period. So Goldilocks is favorable seasonal cycle on average over the last 55 years has formed when it's put in a bottom in the July time frame. And then it typically tops out. It makes its a seasonal top uh, right around the uh, middle of October, the opposite of the uh, stock market, right? And then it, uh, then it basically enters a unfavorable time period out there. In the case of uh, gold, we can see that September is its third best performing month. That's been over a 55-year period of time. And uh, the first two performing uh, or best months out there, January is the best, December is the second best, and you've got uh, September uh, pulling up the uh, rear. So, folks, stay tuned for some great programming. Again, I'll be here tomorrow. I am off then from Wednesday until, I think it's September 18th, that Monday. I will be in uh, Japan, 13-hour time zone difference, so I'd have to try to do a live show at midnight. And that's not going to happen, um, not with the amount of sake we're going to be drinking. So, folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll see you tomorrow. Be safe out there. Take care and have a marvelous Monday.